Um, Sensible City Lab is a lab at MIT. We're around 30 people in Cambridge, uh, 10 people in Singapore for many, many disciplines. There's uh, designers, planners, but there's also physicists, uh, um, engineers, computer scientists, so, um, sociologists. And uh, we look at the, how technology is changing the interaction, the interface between human and the built environment. So the project I'm showing today is called SeaSwarm. And uh, you know, it started with uh, what we all saw before uh, the tragedy that happened in the Gulf of Mexico. And um, we saw some images before. Now, during the summer in the Gulf, uh, up to 800 skimmers were deployed in order to recover some of the oil at the surface. Uh, of the ocean. Uh, there's many types of skimmers. You know, these are traditional skimmers. You've got uh, uh, different ways to uh, collect the oil with discs, with uh, belts. Um, you know, these are traditional ones. And, um, well, despite the 800 skimmers, only 3% of the oil actually was collected. Um, and uh, the reason for that is that even if you take a skimmer like this, that's one of the most efficient skimmers that have been designed. It's, a, uh, EU, it's, the, it's from a project funded by the European Union. It's called EUMOP. And even if you take this, um, you, know, you collect some of the oil, and then uh, you need to uh, separate the oil from the water, and then you need to take the oil and uh, uh, take it back to the shore or take it somewhere else. So it's not a very efficient process if you do it this way, and that's why with all those skimmers, we only collected 3% of the total oil. So the question we had then in the lab was, uh, is there any way we can actually create a small, inexpensive, scalable, and self-organizing system? A bit like some of the things we saw this morning about how we can use collective system with a distributed intelligence in order to address this problem. Well, um, we started working with a number of people at MIT, again, a very interdisciplinary group, and in particular with uh, uh, a professor called Stellacci, who uh, developed a couple of years ago a material that's actually able to separate oil from water. It's a nanomaterial. You can see actually there in the two pictures, you've got a little bottle with water and oil, and then this kind of sponge will collect the oil, and it's hydrophobic, so it will not collect the water. Here you can see the little video, just as an example where you put the oil in the water and how it collects it as a sponge. So starting from this material, we said, is there any way we can actually create a system of small units that will move on the surface of the ocean, collect the oil, and process it on site? You can burn it. You can kind of digest it. You can find ways to process it on site, and then have all these units working day and night with no human input, collecting the energy they need from the water, from the sun, and then keep on processing and cleaning the surface of the, the ocean. So a kind of distributed approach compared to the top-down approach we had during the summer of big vessels trying to skim the surface of the water. Um, well, then the question is, uh, can you take this and then put it on the surface of the water, like you see here? It will absorb the oil, then you extract it, and then you can burn it or do something else to it and then reuse this and keep on doing this over and over. A little bit like imagine you had a piece of paper that can absorb it, and then you roll the paper on the surface of the water and you keep on doing this over and over again. Um, well, the question was, how do we design a system for that? Um, if you need to move um, something on the ocean, something heavy, and uh, you need to move it quick, then what you get is a shape that's a shape we all know. It's the shape of a boat, of a catamaran. So that's very efficient. It's the best shape you can have if you want to have a big weight and move it fast across the water. But the question here was, what would be the shape of something that would actually be very light, like, you know, like a roll of paper, and uh, move quite slowly on the surface of the water? And then we started working with people in uh, ocean engineering at MIT and a number of students. And actually what comes out is that it's quite efficient if you take something, again, that's like a bit of a conveyor belt, just rolling on the surface. A bit like what you see here. That was the first prototype. You can see the kind of uh, uh, kids uh, surfs on the side, and uh, uh, you see it moving here. Uh, you know, very rough, just tested in a water tank at MIT. Uh, and that becomes very efficient as a way that you can 
move something light and keep on moving it on the surface of the water, just a few watts of consumption. So if you only need a few watts, then you can use uh, photovoltaics to power it. You could use the actual oil you collect to power it. But then what happens when you stop collecting the oil, all of these things will die and in the middle of the ocean. So if you use the photovoltaic, you can actually get enough energy to keep it running day and night with just uh, two square meters of photovoltaics. This is what you, the different components, a slightly more refined version than the one you saw before. Um, you know, it's again a kind of catamaran just for driving, but the main mechanism to, uh, to, to, to push it is this conveyor belt on the surface of the ocean. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, if you go something rigid, you need a lot of weight and a lot of mass in order to make it solid, because you can imagine a big wave and you've got, got a lot of momentum bending onto the structure. But if you have it flexible like this, then it can be very light. So you saw here, even with little waves, it will adjust to it. And then, again, you get the oil back. Uh, you heat up this material, this nanomaterial, you get the oil out. And then, well, you can burn it. It's better to burn it than to have it in the water. Um, you can bag it. You can have little bags with a tag, and then a bigger vessel will come and collect them. So you pack it and you leave it there for a bigger ship to, to come. Uh, this is uh, actually trying, starting to build it, the first prototype that was a couple of months ago at MIT. You see the, the front. Um, here you see it actually completed, uh, one of them. Here you see it in, uh, in the Charles River uh, next to MIT. Um, and here you see it actually running on the surface of the water. Lighting is very bad, it was raining, it was a few weeks ago. We're now working on the second prototype, but you see the first one, if you actually look at this, so still needs to be changed a lot, but look at the little white dots and how fast it's moving, just with very little electricity and energy. So uh, we're working now on the second one, and um, we am really on the communications between them in a way that uh, perhaps uh, with a kind of bottom-up and self-organizing approach can help us solve such a problem in a more efficient way. And we all hope that we know there will be no other big problems like the BP oil spill uh, this year. But you know, you've got many small oil spills that happen all the time, so you've got a well into the water. And so that's what we would like to address. Thank you.